All right, I'm ready. All right, let's do it. I don't know who else is showing up, but let's start with the jumping jacks. We are going into some core and mobility pretty quickly, but we'll start with some jumping jacks and high kicks to uh, just sort of warm up the body, get the blood pumping a little bit here. And then uh, we'll head down onto the mat for the majority of the way. Keep it going there. I'm just going to turn this onto the all right. All right. Keep the jumping jacks going for just a couple seconds longer here. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's go into high kicks. Start to stretch out the hamstrings. Get the toes up there. So we are calling this core challenge with some mobility work. So definitely be prepared to sort of dial the focus in to the abs, the glutes, the lower back, and just really pushing the body through some familiar poses, but sort of recognizing subtleness of some of the movement, and of course, the core strength. Let's go three. Two, one more each side, and then go ahead and switch right to the knees, two chest, the knee in, open, and drop to the floor, switching sides, getting that knee as far up towards the chest as you can to really stretch through the glute, and then opening up with the fullest range of motion that you can find to stretch out the hips and just get the whole lower body rocking and rolling and ready to go. Finding a little bit of balance here as well, which we'll need on the mat. Let's go one more each side squeeze, big open and drop, squeeze, big open and drop. Nice wide stance. We'll take the stretch up to the upper body, starting with that pull through the fingertips, keeping the shoulders and wrists nice and even here. And as you start to feel the upper body loosen up a little bit, you're going to pull a little bit deeper into that stretch. Feeling the pull from the rib cage all the way down to the hips. And remember, keeping those shoulders and hips facing forward, so you're really looking for that pull along the side of the body. Let's go one more each side. Reach and pull. Deep into the other side. And then go ahead and square the hips off and right into those toe touches. And again, taking it gentle movements with your body until you start to feel those hamstrings and lower back loosen up a little bit and you can reach a little bit deeper into the stretch, drawing the chest down just a little bit closer to the leg. Starting to match your breath to the movement, your breathing pattern is definitely going to help throughout today's workout, throughout the mobility and core work. Let's go one more each side. Reach, pull that chest in, and then squaring the hips off at the top, and one last reach. And then go ahead and shake everything out, and let's dive into our work. You take that over, yes. Okay, so we are going to be on the mat for pretty much this entire workout right up to the very last piece. So again, this is core and mobility, so definitely encourage you to, anytime we're moving through exercises, focus on the core, how involved the core is, where you're feeling that work coming from. Um, if you want some water, I would say bring it down to the mat. This is one of those workouts where we're just going to transition one exercise to the next, to the next, um, for quite some time. So we're going to throw in some familiar exercises, but we're also going to change it up a little bit. So um, just keep in mind that you don't have to transition immediately. When I do, there will be enough time to sort of transition into that pose as soon as you're finished with the one that you are in. And just 
Try to keep the focus on the self, on the core throughout the whole. So we're going to start on all fours. Just get that timer going. So what we're going to do here is we're going to sort of, we're going to move ourselves into eventually a cat cow pose, but we're going to just start with the hip, hip tilt portion. So we're leaving the upper body out of it. And all you're focusing on doing is the anterior and posterior pelvic tilt here. So tilt forward and then back to so sort of finding that lower back arch. So again, leaving the upper body out of it for now, we're going to head there next and we're just focusing on the hips forward and back. One more time forward and then go ahead and come to neutral. We're going to bring that cat cow pose up to the upper body. Now, see, leaving the hips out of it, I want you to push the shoulders up through the ceiling and then relax, come back down to neutral. So you're almost shrugging, sort of feeling like it's the very beginning of the cat cow, the very beginning of that roundness. But again, we're leaving the hips out of it right now. And we're just working on sort of shrugging up towards the ceiling. You should feel those back muscles stretch and come back down. One more, just like that. And then go ahead and find that neutral back, that nice straight back. And I want you to tilt your chin up towards the ceiling. We're just going to focus on the neck here. And then draw the chin all the way towards the chest. So just stretching the neck here, just with a little subtle movement of the head. Everything else stays stable and immobile. And tuck that chin. And down, and then back to a neutral state here. We are going to move into a full cat cow pose now with a little bit of a pause at the top. So take that deep breath in, go ahead and tilt the hips, shrug up towards the ceiling, and round that back. So we're basically taking all three of those first exercises that you just did and combining them. Exhale and push the belly button toward in that and take this nice and slow. Moving in between these two poses, stretching everything out a little bit more before we dive into the true core portion of the workout. But again, you should be able to sort of really feel the tilt of the hip bones, the roundness of the back and the tuck of the chin. Those three separate exercises that we're drawing into one movement here. And all the way through, taking it nice and slow to start us off. Let's do one more. Rounding the back up to the ceiling, tucking the chin. Exhale and push the belly button towards the mat and then go ahead and sit back in child's pose to stretch it out and we'll get ready to move into our next exercise. So from child's pose, what I'd like you to do is place your left hand on the back of your head and all we're going to do here is open up to the left side. So opening up the torso and then back down to the mat. So you're basically leading with that left elbow up to the ceiling and right back down. And you're really only rotating as far as feels comfortable for you. So you're staying low in that child's pose position. And then back to the mat, open to the ceiling, back to the mat. Let's do one more on the left side. And back to the mat, reach that left hand out Right palm comes in, rests on the back of your head, and you're going to open and then back to the mat. And again, you're really only taking this as far as feels comfortable for you. You want to keep that elbow nice and open, so not pulling on the head at all with that right hand. And down. Let's open for three. Two. One last open, and then back down to the mat, reach out into child's pose and just take a deep breath in and exhale nice and slowly. 
and then go ahead and pull yourself back up on to all fours, finding that nice straight back and pulling the belly button in towards the spine. We're going to continue on with that rotation idea this time, keeping the arms nice and straight. We're going to alternate sides. What I want you to do is starting with that left hand, you're going to rotate to the left, open towards the ceiling, and then that left hand is going to scoop under the body, reach, drop the shoulder to the floor, and back up to all fours. And you're just going to alternate sides. Again, really just looking to reach a fuller range of motion. So you'll feel the twist in the spine, but it should feel controlled, those lower back muscles. And then you're going from one extreme to the next, so straighten everything right back out. And tuck it under. Nice and slow movements here. Again, looking to sort of match the breathing with the movement pattern. We're coming up on our first core hold. So one more reach each side. And then we're going to move right into a straight arm plank. So next time you're on all fours, all I want you to do is step it out into that straight arm plank and hold. So we're going to find those core muscles for the first time. Transitioning, transitioning, excuse me, into the core challenge piece of the workout. So shoulders stacked over the wrists. Tailbone is tucked. Taking those deep breaths in as you can. And you want to sort of hold that core nice and tight from the inside out. We're going to do an easy transition here. So starting in just a few seconds, we're going to walk our hands towards our toes into an inchworm and then all the way back out. And I want you to remember to start this with your core. So imagine a string pulling up through the belly button. So you're going to round the back, walk the hands towards the toes, stretch the hamstrings, and then all the way back out. And when you reach high plank again, I want you to do one shoulder tap. One and two. Lock in that really nice form, and then walk the hands back towards the toes. So we're inchworming towards the toes, feeling that stretch in the hamstrings, and then all the way back out into that high plank. Shoulder tap, and keep the movement going here. So plenty of core work, but we're getting in that hamstring stretch as well. And again, all of this movement is initiated from the core. So it would be easy to just sort of throw the hips up towards the ceiling and forget that the core should come into play. But that's where we're focusing on today. So once you hit that high plank, one last shoulder tap and hold. For five, four, three, two, and one. Lower the chest all the way to the mat. Arms out to the T, lift into that T Superman, relax and back up into the push up. Exactly. Go ahead and lower your body back down to the mat. Arms out to the T, lift up into that Superman, that T Superman, relax and back into that press up. Let's get in two more. Body all the way to the mat. Reach, lift and squeeze that whole posterior chain, relax. Hands back into the push-up. We have one more rep all the way down to the mat, out to the T, lift. Excellent. And back into that high plank and we're gonna do a quick hold when you reach that high plank. A little bit more core. So we're moving in to a sort of progressively longer challenge coming up here. So go ahead and drop the knees to the mat. Give the shoulders a little bit of a break. We're going to move through a bird dog series, but we're going to get it. We're going to get into it a little bit deeper with each round throw. So we're going to just start off with a reach. Keep your knees on the mat and you're just reaching the upper body as far 
from your center as you can. So pulling away from the body. Think about elongating the muscles, elongating the spine, and then right back down to the mat. Four, three, two, and one. So we're going to transition that bird dog to the lower half. So you're just going to kick it out straight away from the body and then right back into the mat. So just the lower body portion of the bird dog. And again, you're looking to stretch that foot sort of as far away from the body as you can. Looking for straight lines, longer muscles, and a bit more mobility. All right, we're gonna move into the full bird dog. So from all fours, opposite hand and opposite leg pulls out. Bring it all the way into the center, elbow meets knee. And then all fours, we're gonna alternate sides here. So reach, bring it all the way in, and alternate sides. So lots of balance here, bringing the core in. And still looking at some mobility work here, stretching the spine. And down. Hold strong. All the way into the center. And down. Let's go one more each side. Reach. Contract those ab muscles. And then down, last one here, reach, contract, and down. All right, go ahead and settle back into that all fours position. So I told you we're going to sort of transition into more and more challenging aspects there, right? So we're going to do the same sequence, but from a bear crawl stance. So I want you to just lift those knees up off the mat, and you're going to go back into the upper body portion where you're reaching away from the body, and then back down. Keeping the knees nice and close to the mat. Four, three, two, and one. From that bear crawl position, I want you to kick it straight back from the body. So we're moving into the lower body portion of the bird dog. Reach and pull it back in. Reach with those toes and back in towards the body. The knees stay nice and close to the mat. The butt stays down and bring it in, reach and down. All right, let's get ready for that full bird dog. So take your time here. You want to reach with the right hand and left foot and then back down to the mat. I want you to find your center of gravity. This is quite difficult. And then right back in. If you feel yourself wobbling too much, I just want you to drop those knees right back down to the mat. And we're moving right back in to that regular bird dog. Reach and down. Reach and down. Squeezing the glutes. Stretching. Nice straight body lines here. Let's go one more each side. Reach. Last one. Reach. And then down. Go ahead and let your body reset briefly here. We're going to move into the last challenging bit here. We're going to do the upper body and lower body portion from a high plank position. So step out into high plank. And then reach. Right arm. And then left. Back and forth. Just long reaches here. Don't worry. We'll give the core a little bit of a break. Coming up. Reach as far from the body as you can and bring it back in. We're going to transition to the lower body portion in three, two, and one. Find that plank again. And then you're just going to lift one leg and then the other. And you're going to hold at the top of that lift, squeezing the glutes and down. Keeping the butt nice and low. Hold strong with me. We've just got a few more seconds here, and then we're going to stretch it out in child's pose. Let's, let's do one more each side. Lift, squeeze, and down. 
lift, squeeze, and down. Go ahead and drop those knees and sit back on your heels in child's pose. That was a long core challenge. Taking some deep breaths in here, slowly exhaling. All right, when you're ready, go ahead and pull that body back up. We're actually going to transition into a reverse, uh, excuse me, reverse tabletop position. So almost a reverse plank. What I want you to do is start on your sit bones. Keep hitting this chair behind me. And all you're going to do, I want your fingers starting to face towards your butt. And you're just going to push up into that tabletop position, hips up towards the ceiling, and try to find that nice straight line here. Go ahead and close your eyes, squeeze the glutes, and we're just going to hold. Your fingers at this point are facing towards your toes. Squeeze the glutes, lift the hips nice and high. Take a deep breath in. Slowly exhale. Hold for three, two, and one. Draw the hips down to the mat. All you're going to do is flip your hands around. So now your hands are going to face away from the body. And you're going to lift back up into that reverse tabletop. And all you're going to do is seesaw gently forward and gently back. So a little bit of movement in the ankles, the knees, and the shoulders. And all the way in. Again, squeezing the glutes, keeping the hips nice and high. We're just looking for a little bit of mobility out of those joints here. Keep that movement going for three, two, one and then when you're back in the center go ahead and lower those hips again we have one more progression here i want to straighten those legs all the way out your hands are going to turn not all the way forward but sort of at a 45 degree now and you're going to move up into that reverse plank so lift those hips nice and high once again go ahead and close your eyes and just focus on squeezing the glutes, glutes excuse me keeping the hips nice and high Taking those deep breaths in, slowly exhaling, and holding nice and strong from the core all the way down the glutes into the legs. Hold steady with me. Take a deep breath in, long, slow exhale here. Five, four, three, two. And one, go ahead and let the butt fall towards the mat. Draw the chest all the way up. And I want you to sort of exaggerate this. Go all the way for the toes. Go in for that, that toe touch. And just let your body sink into that, stretching out some muscles in the complete opposite direction than we were just used to. Giving the shoulders and the wrists a little bit of a break. You can feel that stretch through the hamstrings, up into the glutes and lower back, and along the side of the glutes as well, especially since yesterday's workout. Go ahead and sit up nice and tall. We're going to start the final pieces of this workout with a plank hold. So we're back into that high plank form. Whenever you're ready, step it out. Find that nice straight line and hold. This is going to be a quick hold, and then we'll be right back in to some movement work. Make sure that your hands are stacked under the shoulders. The tailbone is tucked, and the core is nice and tight as we prepare to get into alternating deep runner's lunges. So you're going to step to the outside of the hand, as close up to the hand as you can, alternating sides. Let some of the body weight move into that heel, and then back into high plank and step forward with the left. So we're looking for a little bit of a stretch through the hips. We're also looking to alleviate some of our body weight from this hold over the wrists. Deep into that step and then all the way back out.
And we're going to move through this sequence for a fairly long work interval here. Really looking to wake those legs back up. Open up the hips. Let's go one more each side. And then we'll step back into that high plank for a quick reset. Both. All right, what I'm going to have you do this time is you're going to step forward with the right foot, but this time you're going to step in between your hands. If you need to take two steps, that's just fine. So the right foot is in between your hands. I want you to leave the right hand on the mat, and you're going to rotate the left arm and the torso up towards the ceiling. Pause in that hold, and then back down to the mat. Leave the left hand on the mat and rotate up to the right. Nice low rotations here. Again, this shouldn't be painful. You're only pulling your body through a range of motion that is most comfortable to you. One last rotation here. Open it all the way up to the right. Back down to the mat and then step it out into that high plank for a quick reset, quick hold. And then you're going to step that left leg forward, that left foot forward. Again, two steps is just fine. And we're going to move right back into those rotations. So lifting the right hand up towards the ceiling. Back down to the mat and rotate to the opposite side. Your body's deep into this stretch. Your core has been working for some time here. And back down. Keep those reaches going. Let's go one more each side. And then we're going to step it back into reset, but back into that high plank briefly. All right, both hands on the mat. Step back out into high plank. Quick hold here to sort of reset those shoulders decompress. The butt comes down. Go ahead and lift through the belly button again. Push the hips back into a down dog. And then as you come forward again, I want you to bring the hips all the way down to the mat into a full cobra. Lift the chest and chin. And then right back into it again, using the core, right? So this isn't about the hips. This is about that string pulling the body up through the belly button towards the ceiling. Staying in control of these movements all the way through. We've got a little bit of a core push to bring us through to the end of this workout. So we're really going to ask for a little bit more challenge, a little bit more fire from that core. Excellent. Let's do one more full rep. And then as you come back into that plank position, I want you to hold. And all you're going to do is go down, down into a forearm plank hold. So we'll give those rests. A little bit of a break here, but we're still asking the core to work. We're still asking the shoulders to work. Again, looking for that nice straight back, that nice tight core. Hold strong. All the way through with me here. This is a nice long hold. From here, we're going to go down into a Superman position. We're going to work the posterior chain of the core muscles. So we'll give the abs a little bit of a break and turn to those lower back muscles, the lower lats. Hold for three, two, and one. Go ahead and lower the body all the way down to the mat. The puppy dog's going to love this one. All right, reach those hands. All the way out in front of you, feet stretch out all the way behind. I want you to squeeze all those muscles to lift up off the ground. Draw those elbows down and back, squeezing the muscles along the spine. Reach forward again and relax the whole body. Here we go. Lift. Squeeze those elbows down and back. Reach and relax. So feeling those shoulders, feeling the back squeeze. Squeeze those elbows down and back. 
reach and relax. Go ahead and lift. Draw those elbows down and back. Reach and relax. Let's do one more. Squeeze all of those muscles to lift. Draw the elbows down and back. Forward and relax. I want you to bring your hands back under the armpits. Push back up into that high plank position. Lock it in. I'm going to move that forward so I'm not hitting the bench. And we're back into those inchworms. So again, using the core muscles, I want you to pull your butt up. Walk those hands towards your toes. Feel the hamstring stretch. And then walk it all the way back out. So just the inchworm this time, just looking for that final core push, and then walk it up. Always finding that really straight line of that high plank position when you are stretched out on that mat. Remind yourself of your breathing pattern here. Slow exhales. Draw the focus in towards the body. Don't let the mind wander quite yet. Here we go. One more time. Walk those hands all the way up towards your toes. And this time, you're going to hold in that forward fold position. What I want you to do is gently tuck your fingers under your toes. We're going to drop into a deep squat here. So lift the chest and chin and bend at the knees. And boom, there's that sort of frogger squat, that really deep squat. Go ahead and straighten the legs out back into that forward fold stretch. And then back into that deep squat. Butt goes down, knees bend, chest comes up. Yes. Excellent. Nicely done here. A little bit of a stretch for the quads, for the hamstrings to finish us up here. Head down. Let's do one more deep squat. Drop the butt, bend the knees, lift the chest and chin. And this time when you straighten those legs, I want you to release the toes and slowly roll those shoulders up to the ceiling. Big shoulder rolls behind you. Releasing tension from the shoulders the neck and the jaw. One last big deep breath in. Exhale. And you are done with core and mobility. Woo!